Let us pray. God of love, God for all, your purposes are more beautiful than we can possibly imagine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us let go of all that holds us back. Open our lives and our churches to new seasons of humility and faith, of change and growth. Shake us up with the good news of Jesus and show us the way. Amen. And a reading from Philippians in chapter 2, verses 5 to 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the first of these three talks, um, I talked about our founding story and the significance of our why as the Methodist people, remembering that why that J John Wesley articulated way back in 1763 about spreading scriptural holiness and about how we might want to reimagine that vocabulary as being about uh, being a movement of spiritual and social transformation both aspects of that transformation so important uh, and in the second talk i talked about how john wesley recognized the need to create spaces for grace uh, for the grace that finds us for the grace that forgives us for the grace that forms us and how we do that together uh, how we grow in grace so much more when we do it together. And how, uh, as we seek to be a movement, we don't need to worry about what resources we haven't got if we're relying on the re resource that we really need, which is God's inexhaustible grace poured out amongst us. And in this third final talk, uh, as I just reflect on some of the themes in my book, I just wanted to talk about the theme of recognizing that that all of this this mission uh, it, it's not about us the danger is as a church we spend a whole lot of time talking about ourselves how we can be a better church how we can um, order our lives a little bit better but of course the the whole point of being church or being a movement of transformation is that our attention needs to be on that which needs transforming uh, rather than the transforming thing itself if that makes sense the danger is that too often we focus on thinking about the church. We become a bit absorbed. Um, Tony Campolo, the American uh, Christian uh, author and preacher, speaker, he talks about a, an oil refinery and uh, some visitors go and uh, they have a look around the oil refinery. It's so impressive. Pipe works everywhere and so much technology. And uh, they get to the end of the tour and they're all mightily impressed. Uh, but one of the uh, people who's been on the visit said, it's, it's been great seeing everything that you've got here, but, but there's just one thing. I, I haven't seen anything here which is about where the pipe work is for the oil that leaves the refinery. And uh, this story that Tony Campolo tells um, says, oh, we don't, we don't need that and we don't need a shipping department you see actually all the energy that we uh, that we produce here well it it's it's all used in keeping the refinery going <laughs> there is that danger sometimes with church life if we're not careful that it takes so much energy to keep it going that actually we lose the point the why never quite gets to be fulfilled uh, and all the more so if we're relying on the exhaustible things that we have about us, the money and the time and the 
energy rather than God's inexhaustible grace. So as uh, American Methodist Michael Beck puts it, God has a mission, thus there is a church. But the church is not the end all in the end all. Mission does not come from the church. It's, it is from mission and in light of the mission that the church has to be understood, said theologian Jürgen Moltmann. It's so important, I think, isn't it, to remember that this is not about us, that actually, actually we're called to be giving ourselves away for a world that needs the love of Christ. It's a real change of of direction, of emphasis, of seeing ourselves, isn't it? That we're not seeking to build ourselves up, but we're seeking to give ourselves away. It's that that we see exemplified so powerfully in that reading from Philippians 2, 5 to 11, which Paul offers to us as a model for our living. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that's above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now John Wesley, he came to recognise this, that he needed to empty himself, that he needed to be giving himself away, that Christ's love is a love that, that gives itself away. It was part of his extraordinary journey of faith. Uh, and he exemplified that by, by all that he was willing to offer. His selfless uh, ministry uh, of, of travel, of itinerancy, of, of being willing to face the persecution, the insults, the ridicule. He recognised it as he recognised the costliness of ministry. Uh, and it seems to me it's so important for us to get to that point where we recognise that as God's church and as a movement of spiritual and social transformation, uh, we're willing to give ourselves away. Uh, we're not about building ourselves up so that we can look at ourselves and each other and say, isn't it wonderful what we've achieved in, in our church churches gathering together or in our the quality of our buildings but actually isn't it amazing how God is working through us as we give ourselves away and we empty ourselves of all but love and we give ourselves away for the sake of the transformation of the world. Howard Snyder is a Wesleyan scholar and he puts it like this, the church gets into trouble whenever it thinks it's in the church business rather than the kingdom business. In the church business, people are concerned with church activities, religious behaviour and spiritual things. In the kingdom business, people are concerned with kingdom activities, all human behaviour and everything God has made. Church people think about how to get people into the church. Kingdom people think about how to get the church into the world. Isn't that marvellous? So we just recap to where we began in the first of these three talks and remember that John Wesley's why uh, when asking himself why Methodism was to spread scriptural holiness. In 1932 we re remembered in that first talk uh, the deed of union talks about our, our mandate being spreading scriptural holiness through the land and uh, we call it there our divinely appointed mission that we're going to follow with uh, such unfaltering resolve. That was about giving ourselves away, wasn't it? It's about giving ourselves away so that God's kingdom might come on earth as it is in heaven. That's our call, to be the people revitalised, rejuvenated by God's grace that we are 
transforming this world spiritually, socially, one life at a time, one community at a time, in all sorts of diverse ways that we uh, reach into this hugely variegated society, online, digital, in person, all sorts of different diversities around us, but we're, we're reaching into it all giving ourselves away in love for the sake of God's transformation of our world. Let's pray. God, our Father, we celebrate all that you have done in our lives and in this movement. And we want to pray that we will be captured once again by your amazing grace and your perfect love that our hearts might be warmed again that our minds might be captivated again so that our life's journey might might move in that transformational way which is of your kingdom that we might be prepared to be giving ourselves away for the sake of Christ, for the sake of the world that you came in Christ to save. We pray that your spirit might be upon us, the Methodist people once again, to rejuvenate and revitalise us again, to fulfil that divinely appointed mission, that we might be dedicated with unfaltering resolve to fulfilling. Lord, may we place ourselves before you, that we might be your servants, your children, fulfilling all that you would have us fulfil. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. <laughs>